Okay, for this next part, whichever canvas you choose to work on, a black one or a white one, we're going to just start out by laying in our base coat of colors. And I've got a variety of different little brushes here, a couple of filberts, which is kind of a flat brush with a rounded tip um, in a couple sizes. I've got one sort of kind of beat up flat brush. It's, it's one of my favorite brushes. It is kind of seen in better days, but anyway. And then a round one. These aren't fancy brushes. They're not expens expensive brushes, and you can tell they're sort of well-loved and used, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. And this is my porcelain palette, a.k.a. Porcelain, white porcelain plate from the dollar store. <laughs> All right, so ultramarine blue, white. And the colors would be the same even if you're working on a white palette, I mean a white um, canvas. I've got some blue-green light. And as I'm setting up my palette, I'm going to try to keep light colors next to each other. This is sap green, which is kind of an olivey green, yellowy green. That sounds attractive. Okay. Some per perin Peroni? Peroni? I don't know. Orange. It's orange. It's that, that color. I can't pronounce that. And then some yellow ochre. I have a few colors off to the side, and if I decide we need to introduce them, I will let you guys know as we go. I'm going to stand my inspiration photo. Well, I'm going to clip it to the white board here that we were tracing on before and use that as kind of a clipboard. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. And I'm going to prop it up off camera right there so I can see it clearly. I still have the book underneath me so that this doesn't flex too much. I'm going to start with the largest of my brushes and like I said, this is a filbert and it looks like it says it's a number 12 if I'm reading through the paint blobs correctly. This is a Simply Simmons brush. And I'm going to start with blue because the blue sky is really most of the picture. And I'm going to just lay the paint on as sort of a swirling mark. That was kind of what Van Gogh was all about, right? His swirling, kind of swirling marks. This is a painting where you kind of want the brush strokes in the, in the painting. And this is also a painting where it's going to take multiple brush strokes to um, cover everything. Now I'm going to go into the tree a bit because there is some of the blue sky showing through the tree that's here on the painting. And like I said, I, I like the kind of swirling marks that are on here in the inspiration photo, so I want to keep doing those. And without cleaning the brush, I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to just let them mix right on the palette. Because this is a daytime scene, it's not a nighttime scene, so... We don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to just keep doing that. And this is the first layer, so if you don't get stuff in the exact right position or even your swirls going the right way, don't sweat it. This is the first layer.
Also, don't feel like your um, pencil lines or your carbon paper lines, don't be too precious about them. If, you know, stuff gets covered up, it's all right. We can bring it back later. I am going to pull out some aquamarine. I'm going to add that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And let's um, go down here. And I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre. And all the bits on the inspiration photo that are kind of a yellowy, goldeny color, I'm gonna just lay in a base coat of the yellow ochre. There's a little dab, like right here. <clears throat> a little bit in this tree. And again, I'm just dabbing and I'm, I'm going with, I, this is a painting you wanna, you wanna do brush marks. This is about um, suggesting the shapes with the, the color and the marks and not about painting a perfect rendition. So that's what we want. Okay, rinse off my brush. I'm going to go in with one of my greens. This is the blue green. <clears throat> and I'm I'm honestly looking at the inspiration photo more than I'm looking at what I'm painting. kind of normal for me when I'm doing something like this. And I'm just laying in the lighter greens where I see them. I'm going to, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to pick up some of the aquamarine here. I'm going to put a little bit of that in, in a couple of places. Okay, rinse my brush off again. I'm going to pick up the darker sap green. <clears throat> I 
and I'm just following the painting around. I just put a whole bunch of green there and then I'm just going to do little, but I'm just, this is just white. I'm pulling in some swirl, swirls with my brush. I'm still using the same brush. That was, this is aquamarine. And I'm going to go to the round brush with the yellow ochre. I'm just going to put marks, like dots with the end of the brush. And I'm going to rinse it off. And I just, this is just, there's no paint on the brush. I rinsed it off and it's just damp. And I'm just swirling it around in the wet paint. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of white on the round, still with the round brush. Just a little bit of white, you know, dip it in the white paint and then tap it off on the side of your palette so you don't get too much. Yeah, I like that. All right. Let's continue on, shall we? So while we've been fussing with this, this up here has gotten a chance to dry. So. Let's go in here to the church and let's start putting in some of, you know what, I'm going to switch to the smaller filbert brush um, and we're going to start putting in some of the um, church building. And I'm just making marks and laying down paint and suggesting the shape of the building and if it mixes with some paint on here that's wet, that's fine. I'm going to try to leave where kind of the windows are black. If I accidentally, you know, paint over something though, I'm not gonna be too concerned because we do have some black paint, we can always go over it. And this is a first layer. So I'm not, you know, I'm probably not gonna get the shape exactly the way I want it on the first layer. I wouldn't expect that I would. And the nice thing about doing something in kind of the style of Van Gogh or inspired by Van Gogh is, you know, he was kind of all over the place with his shapes. So, you know, it was not about feeling like you have to have a straight line or any of that.
not bad for a first layer. Let's see, right over here there's some white in the inspiration photo, so let's go with that and put that in. That works for me. I'm going to clean off my brush again. And I'm going to go in with my yellow ochre and I'm going to mix it this time with a little bit of the blue green. my brush. I'm going to go in with some of my white, which is going to mix with the, the green mixture I just put on there, but that's okay because that's kind of actually what I want. Okay, I'm going to, my ultramarine blue, I used it all up, so let's put a little bit more out. some right here. just using the picture that we printed with the suggestion of marks and things that are on there. To give me an idea where to lay some of this down. I'm going to put out some black. Not a lot. <clears throat> And I'm going to stick with this small filbert brush for right now. And let's see, right here. And don't be afraid to, you know, get your fingers in there and put, really push the paint around. Get a baby wipe in there. Use my brush off and try to refine and firm up some of the shapes in this first layer. We don't have to, like I said, be perfect, but. I'd like them to be sort of in the right place. Marine. I'm sorry, aquamarine. Doorway's in a little bit of the wrong place, so I'm going to fix it. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to notice as you're painting this that, you know, 
the first layer you didn't get it in exactly the right place that's okay that's why I said this is the first layer don't stress about it um, you're not going to get things in the exact right place and that's okay and uh, right now I'm not even cleaning the brush all the time I am really mostly just um, wiping the excess paint off the brush um, not even doing that always. I'm going to put these um, wires, I think it was power wires or something back in. I think that's what they were. I don't want them too straight. This painting's not really about them being too straight, so, and I'm going to um, not just have them be black either. I'm going to, there we go, that's better. Let's work a little bit on this tree before we stop with this first layer. And try to get some of our highlights in the right place. Black. There's actually a little bit of red right here. And we're going to put some there. And we're going to put a little bit in our trees. And just keep going like this until you get something that you're happy with for the first layer and let it dry until you go on to the next one. Now, I want you to be aware of a few things. And as I'm talking, I'm going to just keep dabbing on some of this paint on here and working on mine. Every painting I have ever done, and most artists will tell you this, has an ugly, ugly, ugly duckling stage. They all do. And so if you get even to this first layer and you think, God, that's a load of crud. I'm watching my language. <laughs> um, okay, never fear. We all feel that way. Just I, wa I don't want you to give up. I want you to keep working at your painting and keep adding layers. This is acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is all, all about layers of mark making. That's what it's all about. So the more layers that you add to it and the more marks that you make, the more interesting your painting is going to become. And you'll be surprised at how much you like it when you're done. Just trust me on that, okay? And I want you to just keep working at it and keep pushing and pulling the paint and keep you know, adding more layers of interest with your marks and your paint until, you know, the end and just keep going. And at some point you'll get something that you really like. All right, so I'm going to, um, let's see if I want to stop. I don't, I think I want to do something in here first before we stop. So let's, let's do that, shall we? There's some yellow ochre down here.
okay? So your first layer is gonna look something like that. Honestly, that's pretty good, I kinda like it. Here's the inspiration photo and here's the painting. So keep going for your first layer, layer. Get marks and paint all over the whole surface and fill in all of your different spaces. Get things kind of outlined where you want them and then let it dry. And in part three, we will come back and we will keep working on our painting. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Visit Deco Art. Um, their website's in the description below. They've got some really great products. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave a comment on the video or you can look in the description for my contact information and send me or contact me in one of the ways, many, many ways there are in there. If you have a product you'd like to send me to try and review or happy mail, you want to send me my PO box is down there too. All right, everybody have a great day. Have a great week. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye.